Okay, welcome into Sunday Sermons. And this Sunday, we're going to get a, uh, as you know, we use the, for the Sunday Sermons, this is our scripture, our scripture book, our scripture is this book here, the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. It's a, uh, a, a, compensatory, a compensatory counter-racist code book that was um, uh, published, or I should say revised and expanded in uh, 2016 from the work of Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. This is the revised expanded edition. And it's a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, which is white supremacy as defined by Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. But this is what we read in every Sunday. And what we're going to do now, and oh, by the way, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. is on the internet, on the uh, broad, uh, transmission, transmits every Tuesday uh, uh, telephonically from his DC home and uh, and Mr. Bobby and the crew they take up the uh, transmission and broadcast it further right mm. excuse me co coconut water um, um, so that, that's that's what we do now what, but but every Tuesday uh, from uh, 9 to 11 9 to 11 Eastern Standard Time uh, Mr. Neighborhood Jr. is on the uh, on the broadcast waves and this uh, past uh, Tuesday, uh, he had a caller, Leona, and uh, she was talking about the heart of the code from the book. And she talked about page 60 and 61. So let's go to page 60 and 61 and figure out what she's talking about. 64, 62, here we go, 1661. This is supposed to be her term, the, the heart of the code. Wow. And this is uh, under economics. Page economics, as you know, economics, as Mr. Nidderfield talks about it, it's basically your your time and your energy. You know, so if anybody's wasting your time, there's that, economics. You know, time is money, as they say, that kind of thing. So anyway, so sixty sixty one, or oh, time and energy is what it says right here. And um, uh, so it's, well, under time and energy, let's read this. What it says here: at the end of each day, measure the value of your accomplishments only by how effective. You were in saying or doing something that proved to be useful in helping uh, to end white supremacy, which Mr. Neely Fuller, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. defines as racism, uh, and in uh, and or in helping to produce justice. Uh, that's the he, that's the balance between people is what it says in the book here. Okay, so one it says producing, building, repairing, improving, and or cleaning those things that have a constructive value and using them for constructive purposes only. That's one under this uh, time and energy on page 60 of the area one of economics. Uh, two, studying, writing, asking questions, and or exchanging views with others about all aspects of how to eliminate racism and how to produce justice in all areas of activities, e economics, education, uh, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. That's the, that's the list. Let me see, don't I have a... My, Where's my mark? See, in this book here, here we go. I have my, um, yeah, you should have a marker, or I should have a marker. And this is uh, several times. I'm going to mark this with a yellow marker, put it with a blue marker. It's, it's mentioned several places in the book, so I'm just going to highlight it here so I know where uh, the, 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 um, all areas of uh, activity, or sometimes he says human activity. So economics, education, entertainment labor, law, politics, sex, and war, counter-war. So that's highlighted there on page 60. I use a highlighter if you, but see in these books here, I say use, use a highlighter. I, um, I think Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Put, put out two more editions. One edition would be like, do I have it up here? Do I have my, uh, my Mark Twain? Anyway, uh, where he wants to put both his uh, word guide and the thing in one book, right? And I think he should do that, that's for sure. Um, I might call in at some point suggest this also uh, he should have for sure but there's this I'll be right back right over here oh, that's Richard Wright this comes from the library no it doesn't have that Richard Wright hey this is a good Richard Wright here I'm going to read that that's the whole it was a short story but now it's the whole can you see it there no you can't see Richard Wright the man who lived underground 
um, it's an unpublished novel by the author of Native Son. Because he made it a short story and then he made it into a novel. Um, so I gotta read that before I leave it. But I have what I am reading now. Where's my book at? Man, sometimes I just throw stuff around. It's not fair to the book. But oh, what the heck? Oh, I'm reading it, so I should have it right here. I'm reading it on thing. Okay? Ah. Taking through, oh, no, that's, these are the books I got from uh, from um, John Mason. You gotta read that, that's for sure. Um, where did I put that book at? I'm reading it. Man, I got a mess here. As usual, I like messes like this. And I like it, I'm reading a story in it. Well, I don't know where that is. Let me just show you what I'm talking about with one of these books here. Uh, I'm going to take the, this one right here. Oh, there, right there. It's right in front of my eyes. Of course, I'm reading it, so it's up there. See, this is a short story of Virginia Hamilton, right? And it's from the uh, Library of America. It's Library of America. It's usually their books <laughs> look like this. See, they usually have this color, this kind of black and the, the red and the white thing. This is three of uh, Octavia Butler's books, Kindred. I read Kindred when it first came out. I mean, when it was a, before anybody knew about Octavia Butler. Fledgling, which I haven't read in, in, in collected stories. So I'm going to keep that in my library. I don't know when I'm going to read this. But I'm reading this now. But the reason why I'm bringing this out is because um, they have in these books, they have these um, these things here. Where you have your page here. I see, I could have showed you the same thing with my Gullah Bible. They have that like 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 when they have the Bibles. Like, you know, when, when I read the Gullah Bible, if you're listening to this, then you know I have a Gullah Bible. So you see the Gullah Bible has the same thing, has that little ribbon there that for for thing. So I think Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. should have a book where when he has his work and everything in one book and make make it so it could go in one volume, right? Uh, but then have that this thingy here, this thingy here that, that that marks the pages, that makes it classy, right? And then the pages can be, um, also the pages can be, um, the, the, the the type can be smaller. Like this has small and large type on one page, that's the color Bible, like that. Then, but try to put it into one, not one volume is what he wants to do. And this would, the volume would be probably about this thick here. But this volume is, maybe it's about the same thing. Well, I don't know. I don't know how he's going to do that. It has to be smaller font. That's one thing. But then the other thing um, that I suggest that he needs to have a premium like coffee table book or something like that where, uh, where it costs a lot of money to, uh, to supplement whatever his desires are. Uh, so what was we doing? So we was, we was up here reading. Um, and we said that was number two. Number three, eating and sleeping correctly and only as necessary. Oh, that's interesting. Um, Engaging in sexual intercourse no more than two times every seven days and using a minimum amount of time and resources in association with engagement. That's interesting. Uh, people, the sex thing always gets people, you know. But I sort of really ag agree with that. You know, I mean, you, you don't need to be boinking all the time. You know, I won't say take a break, but just, you know, boink. I mean, because it's, it's, Really, you, procreation is one thing. You can only procreate at least with one woman every nine or well, nine, whatever it is, like that. So anything else is pleasurable. You know, how much pleasure do you want? Every day? Uh, I shouldn't say anything because I, I used to, uh, we won't get into that right now. Uh, so that's that's the four rules, I guess, or something like that. Oh, here's the explanations. Oh, these suggestions are the four basic correct ways for victims of white supremacy, non-white non -white people, to use his or her time and energy in a matter that is not too restrictive, okay, and at the same time, economically constructive. Okay, that explains it, right? Um, if each victim of racism would limit all of his or her activities to no more than the aforementioned, most of his or her problems would be greatly minimized in a very short amount of time. It's your economy, right? Victims of racism who are serious about eliminating racism, white supremacy, and, and or 
who are serious about producing justice cannot afford to engage in any activities other than the aforementioned. So anything uh, uh, out, out of these uh, studying, uh, producing, building, whatever, uh, eating, sleeping, uh, sex, whatever, I, I guess that's what this means. Uh, you can judge it for yourself. Oh, if you want to judge it for yourself, you get get the book. Go to go to producejustice.com and, and buy the book. You know, because two separate things and, uh, you know, a word guide and a book. Then you can get the, the classic uh, book, which is which has a little bit of a word play in there. Um, and so that's 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 nothing. We get the in other words, you get the revised edition, or you get the classic thing, right? Uh, Victors of racists who are serious about eliminating racism, and white supremacy, and or the serious about producing justice cannot afford to engage in any activities other than the aforementioned. Okay, uh, the voluntary and constructive use of time and or energy by substantially num by substantial numbers of the victims of racism racism would have a very damaging effect on the continued practice of racism while racism uh, racism could uh, could continue to exist for a while but only with great difficulty the great improvement in the production of justice would be uh, um, immediately if uh, evident at the same time each victim of racism would quickly become a stronger and greatly improved person that's interesting. Oh, do you agree with that? Well, maybe, maybe. I have this other idea. When we're in uh, October now, I think starting in, like, say, for Martin Luther King's birthday, right through to Malcolm X's birthday, that time period, we should all just be focused on being, being as 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 black as possible. Let me put it that way. I don't know how else to put it. Right? It'd be what I call the jump theory. In other words, those time periods that they'll be like. Yeah, for January, February, March, April, April, May, right? So basically, probably about four months. You know, we you intensely do these do 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 what do what Miss Neely Fuller Jr. advocates here, and plus just have principles. You know, we do the code like that. And when, I think that would do a greatly. <clears throat> excuse me, fixes races who are serious about eliminating racism. Okay. Here. Uh, the voluntary and constructive use of time and or energy by substantial numbers of the victims of racism would have a very damaging effect on the continued practice of racism while su white, white supremacy. Racism could uh, continue to exist for a while, but only with great difficulty. Great improvement in production, like, like we said, okay. Victims of racism would no longer, uh, with relative ease, be sidetracked into and or burdened with activities that are at best useless rituals and or destructive fads. Um, but using uh, time and energy to uh, in, in accordance with the aforementioned suggestions, ra uh, victims of racism would eliminate doing these non-constructive and mostly non-satisfying uh, uh, things that usually have the product of indoctrination and or of long-standing habit okay usually auto product of indoctrination you know brainwashing basically uh, uh, the overall function as constructively progressive persons would be greatly uh, simplified through speech uh, uh, thought, thought speech and action would be uh, much healthier and characterized by less confusion Frustration and clutter. Should I stop there? Yeah, let me stop there. So that's the uh, number area that's six that that that, that uh, this woman Leona called and talked about. Missy Nearly Fuller Jr. answered her her about that. So it's 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 a uh, it's something we all should should think about. You know, it's part of the code. You know, you got to have a code. And like I said, I was listening to uh, I was listening to. Uh, a bunch of people like that, and I realized most people are not on code. And when you're on code, then you can you can just ignore. You won't be in the backwash of uh, of other people's of other people think. Did I have this card in here? Oh, this is my oh, this is my, this is my guy under uh, my soap, my soap and uh, soap not dope guy up here in Portsmouth. I think that's him. Yes, yeah. smell good, look good. Two dot com. Okay, so that's it. You know. For this week's uh, Sunday sermon, preacher then preached a little bit. Well, I read a lot more than, than preached, but just know that uh, there's things we could be doing 
and we should be doing. I mean, that's that's what uh, that's what we're here for. Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. would say, uh, for we're here for to do constructive things. That's the, that's the whole day. Do constructive things. All right. Uh, talk to you another time. This has been me, T from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.